Hello, welcome to this talk on the standard adaptable neural network for robust medical segmentation. So we looked at the domain shift issue in medical segmentation, and in particular, we looked at domain shifts pertaining to uh, acquisition-related changes. So when you train on a data set acquired from a certain scanner, and you test it on images coming from a different scanner, and you see that uh, for test images from the training distribution, you get good predictions, it's compared to the ground truth, but when the test distribution changes a little bit, then you start getting these mistakes in the predictions as compared to the ground truth. And this holds for other separate anatomies. And when the protocol changes altogether, then the segmentation that you get is uh, basically not useful at all. And this is reflected now also in these quantitative measures. For example, here we see the type course. So the first take-home message is that CNNs are not robust against such domain shifts. And even relatively small differences in the image statistics can uh, cause substantial performance degradation. Now, this is a very well-known problem in the literature, and it has been looked at in a large number of settings. And here we try to list these settings and try to look at how they differ in terms of what needs to be done in the source domain and the target domain in terms of the data that is required and the kind of algorithm that needs to be run. And uh, without going into a lot of details, what I want to say here is that as we go down uh, the rows in this table, uh, we are basically trying to reduce the dependence on label data. So here we have domain generalization, which is still supervised learning, but you try to do learning at once with one or more source domains, and you try to have some regularization such that when you now go to a new target domain, you want to be able to do predictions without doing any adaptation to the network. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, you have unsupervised learning where you do not have any dependence on label data at all. You directly do your optimization for the test image. Now, these two paradigms have a sort of complementary benefits. For example, uh, supervised learning can um, leverage label data sets to learn these complex input output mappings. On the other hand, unsupervised learning, because it does not learn from a source domain, it does not overfit to a source domain. So it is uh, inherently robust to changes in acquisition parameters or other types of domain shifts. So now, a uh, natural question is, can we try to combine the benefits of these two types of approaches? And this is what we propose here. So we say, let's do domain generalization. So let's do all the tricks that we were doing here uh, in terms of the regularization and so on. But then when we go to the test uh, domain, uh, let's also leave room for some adaptability there. And uh, let's do this adaptation for each test image. So then we have this domain generalization with test time adaptation. So schematically, how it looks is uh, you, you have this ball of source domain images and uh, you, you have uh, certain samples from this ball and you use these samples to train a network uh, to produce segmentations which are ball, which, which are points within the, within the ball of code segmentation. Okay, and now you have a target domain uh, ball. So you go to a new hospital or a new scanner or something like this. And now this image, when passed through uh, the mapping learned on the source domain, will produce a segmentation which will have some problems. So this the segmentation will be a dot that lies outside the ball of code segmentation. And this is the domain shift problem. And the hypothesis that we have is that if we fix the parameters to those that were learned on the source domain, then it is difficult to guarantee good segmentation for completely unseen target domain. And therefore, uh, to have uh, such good performance, we should allow for some per test image adaptability. So now there are two questions. So the first one is which parameters to adapt? So should we adapt all the parameters of the network or uh, some subset of those parameters? And here we say, uh, let's let's introduce a small normalization network. So this, this network is uh, about three convolutional layers uh, with the relatively small kernel sizes. And the idea is to make this the adaptive module. And the idea with keeping this network small is to enable the network to only uh, model contrast changes without introducing substantial structural changes in the image. So we train M and F jointly on the source domain. And then when we go to the target domain, we fix F and we adapt phi for each uh, test image. So each test volumetric image. So that's the first question, which parameters to adapt. And the second question is now how to drive this adaptation. So we said that the uh, initial prediction for a target domain image will be outside the ball of good segmentation. So we drive the adaptation by trying to push this inside the ball of good segmentation. And now to quantify this ball of good segmentation, we use a model. Uh, here we use a uh, denoising model encoder. So the denoising model encoder treats uh, such uh, corrupted segmentations as noisy segmentations and tries to map them to um, denoise segmentations or plausible segmentation. And this denoising model encoder is independently trained on the source domain by uh, heuristically generating uh, noisy segmentations by essentially copy pasting uh, patches of different sizes to random locations. And now during test time adaptation, we uh, uh, change the parameters of the normalization module for each test image such that the input of the denoising model encoder becomes like the output of the denoising model encoder. So this is the loss function that we um, optimize for each test image. And how does this look like uh, qualitatively? So you have uh, some image from a target domain and the corresponding ground truth segmentation. You don't have the ground truth segmentation, uh, but you want to segment uh, the image using your algorithm. And when you pass the image through a network that was trained on a different source domain, then the network makes some mistakes like this. Now, you pass this uh, noisy segmentation through the denoising auto encoder, and you obtain a denoised version of the segmentation. Now, you adapt the parameters of the normalization module by minimizing the loss between uh, this segmentation and this segmentation. And after a certain number of iterations, uh, the segmentation improves. So you see that these mistakes are reduced. You again pass them through the denoising auto encoder, and you keep repeating this procedure. And you see here that the dice with respect to ground truth, with, which is a quantity of interest, but which we don't have access to, uh, this plot follows quite nicely the pseudo loss that we're using, the, the, uh, the dice between the input of the DA and the output of the DA. So that's uh, nice. 
And finally, we want to show uh, some concurrent desktop adaptation work. So this idea seems to be uh, coming up quite a bit in the past six months to a year or so. Uh, so here, uh, the first one is the, the work that we talked about here, uh, in this talk. So we are trying to put some kind of an implicit prior in the label space of segmentation labels. And then we are using this prior information to drive the adaptation at testing. There was this paper in ICLR, which tried to do a similar thing for image classification. And there, the prior in the label space was that uh, they wanted the, um, the outputs to be uh, confident. So they wanted to minimize the entropy of the prediction. Um, and then there were a, a couple of works last year, which uh, said instead of putting priors in the output space, let's put, let, let us put priors in the in, in some intermediate feature space. And therefore, they either train some self-supervision networks or auto-encoder type, type networks to, to achieve that. Okay, so with that, we uh, have the second take message that, uh, uh, you know, in order to tackle these domain shift related issues, you may think of uh, adapting the CNN for each test image. And if you're doing image segmentation, then a suitable loss for doing such adaptation might be to put a prior in the output space. Okay, with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. These are the QR codes for the short paper that we have at MIDL, uh, the, the long paper uh, that we have in media, and the code. And then if you have any questions, please uh, join us in the poster session. Also, feel free to write to me. Um, thank you very much. Bye-bye.